Ciao a tutti. Today it's the day where the Pope has been elected. Um, it's a wonderful day. I'm so excited about our new Pope. But also I'm also excited to make our Easter, a traditional Easter bread that my mother used to make when, uh, since I was little in Italy. So it's a special time. Even my kids look forward to, to this Easter bread. And we only do it um, the week before, um, not only, uh, the time during Lent we do it the, the week before Easter or Palm Sunday. So whichever you have the time for. So the kukulich is a sweet bread. And it's, um, sort of it, it gives, it tells us our faith too. is because uh, it's shaped uh, in, um, it looks like a doll, but actually it represents Christ wrapped up for the burial. And it has a crown of thorn on the back. And we have a, um, a fresh eggs. You'll see the result at the end. So let's start with the ingredients. In the ingredients I have, I have written here because I don't want to forget. I have six eggs. They're here. Now, this time my husband bought extra large eggs. So for in order for you to have the right amount of eggs, um, I measured it. And it's, um, it's seven extra large eggs that equals to 13 ounces or one and two third of a cup. So this way, if you're short of that, you have small eggs or whatever, you just measure to that equivalent, equivalent of that measurement. So let's start. We're going to start with um, uh, putting our sugar, in, uh, our sugar in first. The sugar is two and a half, two and a quarter cup of sugar. I already measured. You don't want to stand there and see me measuring. And then I have one and a quarter cup melted butter that it's gone cold. More like room temperature on the cold, on the cooler side. So now that I have the eggs and, no, not the eggs, excuse me, the sugar and the um, butter in there, I'm gonna mix it. Okay, now, we have mixed it for a few minutes, and it's smooth. And at this point, you can mix a little bit more too if you want to, but you want to combine the, um, the sugar and the butter together. And if you have uh, the KitchenAid, the one that stands up, you could do that in that, so you could do it quicker and faster. I'm doing it with a hand mixer, so I can show you if you don't have the KitchenAid. So we do, we're doing this now. The next step is to add the, um, excuse me, the um, eggs. Now, the eggs, I have seven extra large eggs here. It measures um, uh, three, 13 ounces or one and two third cup. The reason I'm doing this way to you now to measure, so if in case you have small eggs, or maybe have jumbo eggs, there'll be too many. So make sure that you're putting in a measuring cup or a weight cup and that you have that amount, 13 ounces or one and two thirds of a cup. So I'm gonna put the eggs in here now. I'm gonna try to go one at a time. Now it's combined all together with my spatula. I scrape the sides. Why do you put the eggs in one at a time? Uh, because um, uh, if you put all the eggs at one time uh, and you splice, there's a lot of liquid in there and you, like, it goes all over the place. Um, that's the reason for it. I mean, not that uh, if you put it uh, all at one time, it, um, oops, sorry. See, mistakes are made in the kitchen, but don't worry about it. Good cooks are not perfect. In here I have three and a half pound of white unbleached flour. Uh, and it's, uh, you make cakes, uh, you make bread with this. It's all purpose flour, but it's unbleached. So in here I'm going to put two and a half tablespoons of baking powder. See, I mix it with this. So my um, baking powder is not all in one place. 
You could do a sift if you want to, but if you have a wire whip, and this, it'll go fast quickly. Now what I'm gonna do is, I am gonna add all the eggs in there. All in there, just dump it in there. If you see that maybe you have a, a, maybe a little lump of sugar or something that didn't go together, don't worry about it, just put everything in there. And I believe in getting every drop, because it's so good. And it has so many memories for me with my mom making this. And when she made this at Easter, she would make one for each child. So we will carry around for a little while, especially me and my sister. We will carry around a little bit like, like a, a doll. And then slowly we will start picking and eating it. Uh, so that was a special treat. Okay, now in here I have... A half a cup of, um, no, excuse me, a quarter of a cup of sweet vermouth. This is the, the flavor. That's what makes the, the gugliche bread, the sweet bread. See? It's a, it's the low, it's not an expensive one, but you don't have to get an expensive one if you don't want to. This will do the job. And then I have pane de lian chili. It's, a, it's like a, a, a bacon powder. But this is important for Italy. I get, I don't know how you, where you get in, in uh, California. I live in the Santa Cruz County. Uh, not too many Italian stores. Not, no Italian stores here. So when I go to Connecticut, I pack myself up. There's 10 envelopes in there. And, uh, I might get a closer look. Yeah. And last time I was there, which was um, last year, um, I bought them, and they're $8.99 for 10 package. So, but they're worth every penny. So, what I do is I get a quarter of a cup of vermouth, of sweet vermouth, and then I add my um, bande de yarn chili in here to dissolve. And the, the sweet vermouth, it releases such a, a flavor that it's unbelievable. You stir it. I have another one here. And in case if you find your bacon powder that you, it's been around maybe a while, uh, it's a little cakey, a little bit. You still can use it. Your baking powder? Uh, your uh, pane de angel, excuse me. Um, this one will bubble a little. You stir until it's um, it's all dissolved. See? And then you add it, you add it in here. Oh, gosh. Oh, it's actually bubbling. It's bubbly, yeah, because it's, a, it's a, like a bacon powder, too. But sometimes it doesn't um, activate. But I still use for the flavor because it has a, a wonderful flavor. But this is my, um, my thing, what I add to it. I like to buy the vanilla bean paste. But you can buy a, a vanilla extract. But I do this. It adds a little nicer flavor, too. So I have a, a teaspoon of this that I put in here. Oh, it has a little been some uh, speckles or whatever you call inside there. It's wonderful. And I start mixing it. Start blending it all together. At this point, I think I'm going to Use like the electric that. beater? Uh, use my hands, because on this you have to use your hands. It's not a cake batter, it's more of a, it's a, it's more like a cookie, a little stiffer than a cookie. cookie. It all depends what cookies you make it, dough. So this is time for Mama Bella's hands to go in. See, this is so good, I don't want to, I don't want to waste any drops of it. And. So while you're mixing it with your hands, do you want to tell us any more memories? Or oh, yes. How you learned how to cook it? Yeah. So as I tell you, this was something my mother did for Easter. And other people in town, too, uh, if they could afford the, the eggs and the sugar. Because in, in Italy, I might, when I was a little girl in there, uh, their eggs and sugar were very, very expensive. So And all the other things, too, the butter. I think my mother used the olive oil. 
instead of butter. Or maybe she used the Crisco, I don't know. So it was something like that. So here I am. You can see that it's, uh, see you can't do with the mixer, the hand, hand mixer. So, and you keep on mixing. I try to get the, the wet ingredients in there. Okay, now I'm gonna put both my hands, they were clean. I washed them just before. You smell it? Oh my God. You know, I know that a lot of you don't agree with this, but we like to eat a piece of this raw. We did when we were young. I'm 65 years old, so obviously it didn't kill me. Okay, so I do this, and now what I do is a, a little rest, just for a little bit, not enough that it needs rest, but because my arms need rest. I'm a little bit shorter for this counter. So here I am with this. So I'm gonna clean my hands, and then I'm gonna put it on the board and I'm gonna get my sheets ready. On the sheets I put a paper, um, wax paper, excuse me. Um, I don't grease it, I don't flour it, just paper, uh, um, wax paper to line the bottom of the sheets. And, oh my God. Do you know you want to taste a little bit? Oh yeah. You see? Like mother, like son. All my kids like to eat it. My grandchildren don't because oh, the parents are worried about the eggs and the salmonella and all that stuff. Okay, so this is how it goes. Now, I'm, this is my board, what I'm gonna be working on. Okay, but before that, Gina, I have to get my sheets, my cookie sheets ready, okay? okay so so I'll fun. see you in a sec. Yeah.